with us about 15 minutes of the next hour, then James O'Keefe, author of Breakthrough, uh, how you can really become true citizen journalists. This is the Bible, how to take action. Uh, we sell it at InfoWarsStore.com, uh, heads up Veritas Project. He's going to be uh, joining us, founder of the uh, Project Veritas, the Veritas Wars. Uh, this has been the war against lies. Uh, you know, from more of a paleoconservative perspective, you come from more of a uh, populist perspective, I would say, Wayne Madsen. Wayne, you are so interesting on air, but also off air even more so. Where do we start? I mean, let's start with, you're on here a month ago, you're on here two weeks ago. Everything you said, you guys did this last night. Weeks after, we show the clip where you say it, or where you said it, and then it comes out admitted, but then they're simultaneously saying, you're not a good source, you're bad, because they're upset about you. Aren't they also hijacked your computer right when you got here and wiped it? I mean, I mean, describe what's going on with CNN and others and why they're so upset about you. Because folks may not remember, I remember, 10 years ago, you were the main NSA master whistleblower who was bringing out all these other whistleblowers. The difference was Bush wasn't prosecuting them. Right. Uh, well, 15 years ago, I was with a, a group called the Electronic Privacy Information Center, a public you were on the board. Agency. I was a senior fellow with them, and we took on as one of the projects the expose of, of Echelon, which was this system by... You were Electronic Frontier Foundation, too. You were a whole... We were uh, allies with them. You were a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, we worked with them quite closely. We also worked with the European Parliament to expose this NSA eavesdropping. They issued a report. I testified before their uh, representatives who came to watch... It's on record that Hayden had a whole group spying on you. Uh, yeah. They had a, a group called... Uh, it was a project called First Fruits... It was spying specifically against journalists who wrote about NSA. I was told by somebody who worked uh, on First Fruits, uh, I was on the list. James Banford was on the list. Uh, Vernon Lowe from The Post. Bill Gertz from The Washington Times. Cy Hirsch from New Yorker. And then it was it, it expanded. And then when you see Hayden, what does he do? He, oh, yeah, he, he even knows what you look like. Yeah, I was told by good sources at NSA at the time when Hayden was a director that he got a once-a-week briefing on what I was doing, obviously, you know, what did you hear on his phone calls, his email? And then his deputy, Bill Black, was briefed daily at, at you know, Monday through well, Friday. Well, the, the thing is, you never toot your horn. You're like <laughs> the iconic master whistleblower guy. I, I mean, I mean, that's why they're saying this guy's nobody. He, uh, they even said your name wrong over and over again, <laughs> trying to confuse people. Well, right. I mean, on CNN, I was uh, referred to as Michael Matz and obviously confused me with the actor. Uh, at least they didn't confuse me with Virginia Madsen, who's Michael Madsen's uh, sister. Uh, uh, but, you know, these people can't get it right. They were saying that anyone who Googled me would find out, you know, I had written controversial things in the past. Of course I do. That's how I make my living. I, I'm trying to bring back muckraking journalism as it was practiced by Jack Anderson, Drew Pearson, I.F. Stone, H.L. Mencken. We can go back into history. That's been lost. We don't have journalism like that anymore. We have the reality is thing. sensational. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I mean, so these these people who were attacking were using Google and they were using Wikipedia. Wikipedia, my entry in Wikipedia, my birth date is incorrect. So, you know, my point is, I oh, know they spell my name wrong <laughs> on there. And my mother's like, why is your name wrong everywhere? Emmerich. And I go, they won't change it. Right. I've even sent them my driver's license, a copy to, to, to Wikipedia, and they go, we're not changing it. The minute It's the, full of crap. Right. The minute you change Wikipedia back to, you know, something that looks halfway legitimate, somebody goes in and changes it back and puts all the... It's not many journalists, and I myself, we've all been burned by using Wikipedia. We just don't use it Well, you it can't take what it says. If the references on the bottom are good, a, lo a lot of it is really good. Yeah, you go to it, the it, It's just that sometimes it's got pure bull, like Alex Jones died of a heart attack. You know? yeah, right. So I'm getting called, so you died of a heart attack. I know I promise I didn't. Right. Right? You go to the reference and see if they're legit. That's how you have to use Wikipedia. But these people did not do their job. They used incorrect information. Uh, they use Twitter. They look. They use all the social networking that the Soros people use to overthrow foreign governments, and and so it's easy to attack a single journalist in this country uh, using the same means that they use to overthrow governments in Ukraine and Georgia and Tunisia and Egypt. Oh, I get these wave so. attacks all the time. Yeah. And then I'll search who it is, and it's guys active duty at the Pentagon, active duty Ford Foundation, active duty Media Matters. 
One They're of the, on duty. Right. One of the guys who attacked me on Twitter is a is a full time professor at the U.S. Naval War College. That's part of the U.S. Navy. And he, you know, I said, hey, what about the Hatch Act? You can't be using your affiliation with the U.S. Navy uh, in partisan political activity. Well, he was very arrogant, this guy, John Schindler. And as you uh, pointed out, he was going 10 hours at a time. Oh, I mean, this Manson. was duty. This was duty. Yeah, this. Yeah, this is Manson. We know about sock puppets working for H.B. Gary Federal and Palantir. Develop the prism system that yeah let's let, let's talk about sock puppets I, I tell people they've got fake people posting and they go oh that's out no, this is admitted yeah and, and and you learn how they operate because you can put in the sock puppet comment put it in you'll find a hundred of them in the last minute it's everywhere posting it we'll be right back stay with us jakari jackson here and i want to talk to you for a second about water you know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw. The Crystal Quest shower filter system and the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Her song, you know, I heard when she takes over the California college school system, part of the agreement for her to get the job is that she has to wear a muzzle when she enters the ladies' room. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Madsen, you actually made that joke during the break, and I, I had to it. steal it. It's too <laughs> funny. <laughs> but listen, it's not. I'm not even against people that are into her persuasion. I could, uh, that's not even my ball game. It's that there is the big controversy up there, and that's my intel. A bunch of their deputies have had to resign, Justice Department. Uh, they've had people, you know, uh, uh, do the out-of-court settlements. What is this they do to the men? Because they almost do. It's the men, actually, that they make, I guess, like Abu Ghraib, crawl around with the dog leash and stuff. So, I mean, I guess they do need to be politically muzzled in their... Cause so, so, so it's like this certain breed of woman that's like hyper-dominant. I hear they take testosterone and stuff. I mean, what is that? Uh, you know, I don't know. We, we knew this with the Abu Ghraib and... Some of the abuses in Guantanamo and some of the CIA black sites is sadomasochistic behavior by these interrogators and guards. I mean, where who who came up with all this? I mean, these these guards did not think about this on CIA the did. Yeah, yeah. They, but they admit they're mainlining yeah. something they just like to do. Yeah, and then I, I was told by a very good source that some of the videos of this uh, sexual abuse was being live streamed up to. Um, the, the White House, where, you know, Dick Cheney and his buddies were uh, watching it. Well, that actually came out in the news yeah. that, that uh, Congress w would, would, would get the thousands of videos and really enjoyed them. Yeah, and then the closet that was streaming all this, the electrical closet, the comm closet in, in the old executive office building caught on fire. It was like a two-alarm or three-alarm fire. The D.C. Fire Department, you know, came in there to put the fire out. So, you know, the video streaming equipment... Uh, burned up just when there was interest being expressed in what you know Cheney, Cheney's role was in uh, in in all this uh, abuse at Abu Ghraib and other sites. Gee, you know. But but it's like Joseph Mingla. All these guys always get into like cornered people they control, and okay. and, and that's what tyranny's about. Is that then these psychos get to do whatever they want? Right, right. So, you know the you know the people in charge. Uh, have some real issues. Well, it goes back to Jagger Hoover, like Larry Pinkney was saying. Uh, you know, we, one thing we forget is his co-intel pro and how they they infiltrated the the, the, the Black Panthers with the uh, people. I, when I was investigating the Obama, the book on Obama and the CIA, I had members of the original Black Panther Party from Chicago tell me that when Obama showed up, they knew he was. Uh, you know, he's not one of us. This guy's a plant. They knew all about COINTELPRO. And although, the, you know, at that point in time in the 80s, uh, the Black Panther Party, the original one was kind of subsiding uh, from the news, they knew what they had on their hands. They had a plant, and they knew it. He was trying, even his mother, Obama's mother, Stanley Ann Dunham, said she was shocked to see the change in behavior of her son becoming like more 
uh, of a street guy rather than you know the the son she raised. That's because he was playing and he was play acting, and it was so good he even fooled his mother apparently. Amazing. There's so much to talk about, but specifically, let's 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 get into. Uh, what's happening with Snowden? Your overall take on him? Is he for real? Where is all this going? Uh, what else is going to come out? Because Snowden is putting stuff out that you put out 15 years ago, that Bamford put out on Nightline uh, uh, 12 years ago, Body of Secrets, we had him on, and it was all confirmed to be accurate. So they, they freak out over stuff that's like, today they discovered the Grand Canyon. It's incredible. I mean, it, so, so what's really going on here? Well, Snowden, what he has done is he's... he's the, We've known all this, but you know this this information comes in waves. We had the echelon interest. You know, I was on 60 Minutes being interviewed. That was back in 2000. We had the in 2099, and we had the EU report. It was in the news then. What Snowden has done is by releasing this information, he's shown where we've come. That these programs still exist. They that exist. They've gotten bigger. Uh, the, the, the target audience, uh, the, who they're targeting. The secret interpretation of the Patriot Act is everything. Right. And all info, but but. Right. Didn't the head of the Total Information Awareness Network wrote a New York Times article saying everything you do, we're keeping it? Right. Admiral Poindexter. Yeah, why didn't he get arrested? Go ahead. Admiral Poindexter got hired uh, by um, DARPA, the, the Pentagon's uh, research uh, arm, to come up with Total Information Awareness. This was Total Information Awareness. So when, I, when the Congress pulled the funding, I was told by people, look, it's just going to go over to NSA. You know, it's not going to, it's being pulled out of the Pentagon. And, and that's well, they gave it to private contractors. Uh, yeah, Booz Allen, SAIC, they all have a piece of the action. So I think Snowden's for real. And what he's done is he's, what he's provided us is the new covered terms for these projects. Uh, Tempora for the cable tap, uh, Prism, which was developed by Palantir. You know, I, I, at the Pentagon Metro Station, it's the only Metro Station DC you can't take a photograph. Palantir took over the whole station with their ad campaign on the floor, on the walls, on these signs. And one of the things I remembered, I wanted to take a picture, but they, they arrest you if you do it there at Pentagon Metro, um, was a was a Prism showing all this feed coming in and a single feed going out on the other side of the prism. What do you think that is? That's prism. Now, they denied it. They, of course, NSA is going to use uh, off-the-shelf software. They've done it for years. So prism is, is Palantir. Palantir is also one of the sock puppet companies that was, you know, that uh, attacked Glenn Greenwald when he was going after the Bank of America. Yeah, for those that don't know what a sock puppet is, explain it. A sock puppet is somebody paid to be on the internet. Usually, they're they're operating out of the U.S. Cyber Command, which is the sister command of NSA up at Fort Meade. Uh, each military service has uh, these sock. They get on and they just make comments on these uh, uh, blogs. That and that's admitted. Right. But but expanding, they now have programs where one guy can have millions of comments going where they go and have a computer program. That's why they're now saying they're going to have robots write the news. They put out one press release, the government does, and then even with fake names, the computer rewrites it different ways to make it look like there's variety. Yeah, one person will have like uh, maybe 80 to 100 identities, and it looks like, you know, they're hitting the same website. It looks like 80 people. This is what happened with when the Observer ran my story on the front page. It looked like they were being inundated by people around the world saying, how could you put this guy on, blah, 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 blah. I boiled it down. It was about six to eight people um, uh, doing this. And uh, they constantly put the information out there, these, these uh, comments. And it looked like the, uh, they were big in numbers. They were very small, but this is how they operate. Well, Israel admits for 15 years they've got private citizen brigades. They call it megaphone. And they've got a computer icon that pops up on the smartphone of the computer and then tells people where to go and what to say. The Hasbara uh, Brigade, right. It's... Um, Megaphone and, and G-I-Y-U-S give Israel your united support. And, and that, they've done that for years, yeah. It makes them look like, uh, you know, we're outraged that uh, some article that criticizes Israel when, in fact, these are dedicated people that populate these comments. Sections. And see, the difference is what they haven't gotten around with YouTube, even though it's part of their own system. You'll have 97% positive uh, votes, but mainly negative comments. Because they don't, because the IP addresses, even if they jump, YouTube's recognizing it, not letting them vote. Right. And then, okay. you, and then you get the people that put things from the Bible in there. That's all part of this operation. The YouTube comment section, it's all this 
It's just or they'll the change the subject. Uh, yeah, yeah. Diversionary. Right. This is what they do. They don't want real debate happening. Absolutely. They want to just have thinking people tune out of it. And by the way, Cass Sunstein admitted this five years ago. Cognitive dissonance is what he called it. <sighs> Listen, let me ask your opinion of... Um, Adam Kokesh, uh, you know, you live around D.C., you've been around him. Uh, I, I, I think he has courage on the surface. D.C. Heller has been overthrown. And so I, I tend to not want to nitpick people uh, who I think have a lot of courage. Uh, but I respect your uh, view and opinion uh, of, of things. Uh, Adam Kokesh. Why, yeah, the one thing that uh, intrigues me is why every time he has a run-in with the law, why is it it's always the U.S. Park Police, even though it's an area where the U.S. Park Police has no jurisdiction? It's almost like he, you know, it's, he's assigned, he's got the U.S. Park Police assigned to him. Uh, I find that very unusual. Well, he oh. goes always to park police property. He always goes to their square, their area. He does it on their jurisdiction. Right. He, but, you know, I guess there was I need to ask him about that. Run in in Herndon, uh, Virginia, and I, I don't think the park has anything. They've got Manassas out there, but it's nowhere near Herndon, Virginia. And, and I remember a guy who was with the Vietnam Veterans Against the War who, you know, publicly threw his medals over the White House fence and was always seen with at these anti-war... John Kerry. John Kerry, right. Wasn't he just the guy to be there, you know, and, and later, I mean, it, it's pretty apparent that John Kerry was, uh, was infiltrating the anti-war movement. And look where he is today. See, I have a blind spot because I get accused of being an infiltrator so much and I know full well I'm not. Uh, maniac, yes. Uh, infiltrator. I guess I'm a people's infiltrator. I mean, I don't like being a slave. Uh, I guess I have that uh, you know, that opposition thing to, to, to corrupt authority. I'm, I'm kind of evil. Uh, so then I start hearing, oh, yeah, this is an operative, that's an operative. And I just get to the point where uh, I don't listen to it. But then sometimes it is an operative. I don't think his guys are. I mean, those are real guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it was a case with Kerry with the Vietnam vets. Um, you know, the people who were associated with him were you know, legitimate anti-war protesters who served in Vietnam. But John Kerry was just always, you know, every time he showed up before Congress, he had his fatigues on. They were, they were dry clean. They were pressed, you know, and his hair was coiffed very nicely. You know, the guy, the guy was a shill. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw on it. You know, I want your honest response because I, I know you're for real. Uh, I mean, I'm, just you keep giving us intel that turns out accurate hundreds of times in the last 15 years. And uh, everything you've said about Snowden has come true. So I respect your view. What do you think of Infowars.com and Alex Jones and my operation? I think that you, this operation is so necessary because, you know, the, the, the corporate media, look at the overattention now in this Trayvon Martin case. That, that, that's the Jerry Springerization of the news. And nobody, you know, I mean, there's things going on all around the world. In Syria right now, we had the... Uh, we had a commander of the Free Syrian Army being killed by Al Qaeda guys who are being armed by Mr. Obama right as we speak. He's he's giving them weapons. Uh, we have this mess in Egypt, but all we get is this, you know, this fodder for the Greta Van Susterens and, and this, uh, you know, uh, Grace woman on on CNN headline news. Remember that was headline news. Now it's all tabloid garbage. Sure, but your bottom line analysis. And here I'm showing viewers a, a image uh, of uh, the FSA people with a four-year-old girl tied up while they murder her family. You know, cutting Christians' heads off. Our own government funding Al Qaeda. The Congress saying it's time to give them heavy weapons. They've been giving them heavy weapons. I want to. You've been to Syria. I want to get your take on that. But what is your take? Your analysis? Because I really want your psychoanalyzing on Alex Jones. Uh you know, I talked about muckraking journalism before, Jack Anderson and Drew Pearson. That's what you're doing here. This is the information that people need to know. It, it, you know, you get, you get through all the nonsense out there, all the stupid uh, non-stories, and, you know, di you know dig down. And, and that's why what you're doing here is so... Sure, important. sure. But, I mean, my point is you, you're the victim of sock puppet stuff. So am I. And it yeah. doesn't bother me yeah. to be lied about and attacked, except it bothers me that people that are just now waking up get diverted with, you know, I work for this, I work for that. No, no, I built this myself with my listener yeah. support. And I have all these guests on and we have film contests that reach, you know, 10 million people. Yeah. And, 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 we're, and we're having a huge effect and the COINTELPRO, just like they use on the Black Panthers, is I'm a Fed, I'm bad, right. blah, blah, blah. But, but no, it's the people saying that that are. I, I will assure every listener and viewer that I have been through your, the facility here. There is no secret NSA office. Not like Microsoft has across the street 
Baltimore Washington Parkway for the NSA headquarters, where they work closely with NSA. There's yeah, there's no um, there's no uh, secret NSA office here, FBI office. I you know I've looked I've been through the whole facility. It's a it's a bootstrap operation. But that's the point is that is that I know I've had victories and I've seen other people do huge things who take action and the general public cannot believe that someone could be successful. They cannot believe that 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 someone could do something when all I've seen is good people take action. We have victories and, and it's just it's so frustrating to see people not be able to believe that they can have an effect. The people we're fighting are just people like us as well. Well, if you've been fed a steady diet for so long of Anderson Cooper and Piers Morgan and, and, and Ed Schultz, I mean, Ed, isn't it funny how Ed Schultz changed the whole story on Snowden saying, oh, I think the guy, I think the guy's a traitor. I think the guy did the wrong thing, you know, but let's, let's get back and start talking about, you know, uh, you know, the, the, what's happening in Wisconsin and with the unions and all. It's all important, but you know, he's a diversionary guy. That's why he, and he got fired from his show and get replaced by this, this policy wonky guy, Chris Hayes. So why is he still why is he still following? Why have we never, I've never seen such a totally transparent operation where the White House, the Pentagon, the whole system is not having people behind the scenes now. They're putting them all in the positions uh, of the actual pundits. We have a state-run media. Absolutely. These, you know, when I saw pundits reporting on the plane crash, the Asiana plane crash in San Francisco, you don't have pundits reporting on plane crashes. You have reporters reporting on plane crashes. These people are not journalists by trade. They're lawyers, they're uh, political hacks, and, 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 and so that's what's wrong with the media. You were talking about that last night, how, how you know, 20, 30 years ago, you go to the press club, it was real reporters. Now, yeah. I mean, it, there's no journalism. No, what is it? Oh, no, there's nobody there. I mean, they, they, they've seen their better days. It used to be four deep with real journalists there at the, at the, at the bar at happy hour. They'd all be talking about, the, you know, their stories. Of course, they don't want to, you know, them ripping each other off but you know there was a lot more camaraderie it was real journalists now what you got are pr flax you got lawyers you got you know uh some some people that just you know they ha they don't even know what you're you're working they don't understand what what the news is I mean, well that's right most operatives of the globalists are into are totally want to go play golf visit their mistress uh, and they're totally lazy. They just take a press release from the central government and repeat it. That's why I'm saying our enemy is actually pretty weak. They don't even know how to think anymore. You were talking about the old days. People were really smart. Right. I mean, it's just, it's, it's bizarre. You know, I, when I used to, when I first became a member of the press club, I, I was able to talk to guys who covered the Kennedy assassination. Oswald being shot. Guys like Ike Pappas, who was with WNEW in Dallas, who, who Oswald brushed up against, I mean, uh, Jack Ruby brushed up against to shoot Oswald. So, uh, you know, these are the real, the real journalists. But the, And now they're saying they may even get rid of press conferences and have an Obama hologram, who isn't even him, but his voice delivered. it. Max Headroom. Yeah, the, the uh, talking <laughs> points. And they're, gonna, they're already saying they're going to have robots write the news. Yeah, I mean, you, and you got, you know, you got uh, Jay Carney, uh, I mean, the guy looks like Doogie Howser, you know, and here's he's a, he's a press secretary. Why would why would Gibbs go on TV and go, yeah, we lied to you and said there were no drone programs when it was an admitted program? And he said, the funny thing is, this is admitted to exist, but I say it doesn't. And they all laugh like it's fun as a joke on their viewers. What is that? It's inside baseball. You know, there's a list when they have a press conference who they go to first. This is why they went after Helen Thomas when they... You know, these same sock puppets went after her when she uh, was caught with a camera that would, had been snuck into the White House. She was in the White House. How do you get a camera, hidden camera in there? you got to go through the Secret Service checks. It's like what happened to Dan Rather. These, the small group of these, these ye yellers and shouters on the Internet uh, can take down professional people like Helen Thomas and Dan Rather. So who's safe? Yeah, it's, it's games. Yeah. Well, they've tried to take down Drudge. They've tried to take us down. I watched the dwindling media. You know, it's kind of good they're doing inside baseball on these shows because pretty soon it'll only be the hosts that are watching. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three. 
that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Now, about a month ago, Wayne Madsen was on with us, I think about two weeks ago, and he talked about being part of the EU Commission more than a decade ago. He talked about all the admissions, James Bamford's book, ABC News, about how decades ago, really back to World War II, Europe, the NSA, all of it shares the data. They use foreigners to listen to us so that if anything too sensitive comes out, it, it, it doesn't cause a scandal here in the U.S. This is like talking about you know, that Disney World is in Orlando and them saying it doesn't exist. There's the Irish Times. Snowden claims Germany is in bed with NSA. That came out about a week after Wayne Madsen was on two weeks ago. Now, I'm going to play a clip from CNN this weekend, reliable sources, because they told you they were reliable, like the Patriot Act's patriotic, just butchers the Bill of Rights or drugging half the school kids. It's called New Freedom or, you know, all of this Orwellian or Homeland Security actually makes us insecure, but they call it Homeland Security. And then and they go, oh, it made the rounds. They retracted their story on Wayne Madsen. But the problem is they didn't retract. They denoticed, erased it. And then days after they retract it, it comes out everywhere that it's true. But they just hope they're more on viewers. And we're talking about maybe 200,000. I mean, it used to be like 10 million. So they're talking to, I guess, themselves. I guess it kind of gives the talking point orders out, though, because then it is regurgitated by the rest of the media. So the dinosaur media all vomiting together can still be a pretty good bucket size. Whereas before, one of these guys could turn around and spray political diarrhea over an entire country. But they are shadows of their former selves. And I hate to use gross analogies, but it's all I've got. I mean, it's what I think of when I look at them. But, uh, I mean, wait, it's an AP, Reuters, everything now that, okay, Snowden's in bigger trouble. And Germany's embarrassed, okay, we're spying. You should be getting a Pulitzer Prize, bub. But instead, they're saying things like this to their moron viewers. Here it is. Odd turn this past week when its sister paper, The Observer, ran a front page story that claimed European official has, officials had reached a secret deal with the NSA to turn over private data to the USA. Now, that sure sounds scandalous. But here's the thing. The article based its claims on a single, very unreliable source. A notorious conspiracy theorist named Wayne Madsen, whom reporter Jamie Doward never even spoke with. And not surprisingly, the article was eventually retracted, but not before it made the rounds on the Internet, even receiving a coveted Drudge Report link. A coveted Drudge Report link. Um, we're about to go to break, but just respond. Respond to that because you did talk to the paper. Yes. Uh, and... This is all over the, and you told them, and they quoted stuff. Oh, you were like, look at the European Commission. Oh, it was admitted 12 years ago? Oh, yeah. They're mad because this is hiding in plain view. And you're like, A, B, C, D. And so their answer is to say you're a liar. Well, yeah. I mean, it was incorrect when this guy said I hadn't spoken directly to the reporter. I spoke to him on the phone, and I have emails exchange uh, emails with them before the story came out. He, they know that. It's called lying about to their audience. 12, about 12 emails. Um, so, I mean, they get away with that. Uh, the Pointer Institute, which is a media watchdog, ran with a story based on what they said. And I've been in touch with them. They published the Tampa Bay Times. And I said, look, it's incorrect. I did speak with the reporter. So hopefully they will print a retraction of their article. But see, that's what you're going to get retractions of retractions. and retractions. Yeah, but this yeah. Daily Beast group are a group oh, of, of, yeah. of, of White House snot nose. Oh, oh, absolutely. They're, I notice they're getting younger and younger yeah, and more punks. snot nose. They're punks. Yeah. You know, look, the Washington Post sold Newsweek and the Daily Beast to the current company that owns it for one dollar. That's all it's worth, a dollar. I think they paid too much. And there like six guys over there, too? Oh, yeah. And it's a, the editor's Tina Brown, you know, this British woman who, you know, used to uh, be the... Uh, this is why we're going to beat them. These are a bunch of twit narcissists yeah. playing tough guy. Yeah. And they're going to go down. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just they're just punks. But I mean, it's that's why your audience is gone. They know you lie to them.
Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the New Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buy in these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> I'm going to take a few calls for questions for Wayne Madsen on this live Friday edition. I'll be back live this Sunday, Lord willing, 4 to 6 p.m. with a Sunday transmission. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And then at 20 after, or a little bit earlier, we're getting James O'Keefe on, who brought down Acre and you name it, so much more. You know, 
you know I'm nonpartisan. I'm a libertarian constitutionalist, kind of would lean with what you call Republicans, just because they give lip service to guns and things like that and sovereignty. But the more I learn and get a little more seasoned, being around Democrats, watching them, am I wrong in saying Republicans are like this big imperial starship corruption and just lavishing themselves in country clubs and helicopters? Democrats are like... They have their mafia level, and they're, they're slick as well, but grassroots, they, this is really gangsters. These, are, these, they, these really are, because any, any operation they're involved in, or even their low-level people, you find out, will tell you, yeah, we're gangsters, and they're all involved in crimes and things. I mean, uh, from your research of Democrats, who, who are they? Well, I mean, look at the veterans of the Obama administration. Rahm Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago, he's a thug, he's a gangster. Look what he's doing in the Chicago public school system. And he's benefiting from this. Penny Pritzker, who was Obama's number one, one fundraiser in Chicago, is now the Commerce Secretary. She breezed through uh, a nomination. And there wasn't a question asked about her, her uh, unsavory ties in Chicago. She's the heiress to the Hyatt Hotel fortune. Also has to do with a lot of... Uh, uh, things get uh, a lot of um, information that ar arose in Chicago about Hyatt maybe benefiting from the introduction of casino gambling. Of course, at the Navy Pier on, on Lake Michigan. So yeah, she's mobbed up. So yeah, they, they tend the Democrats who support Obama tend to be more of the what we would expect to find from big city machine politics. You know, Obama gets fake excited when he's lying to old ladies saying, I'll get you a free house, all this stuff. But when he does these gay and lesbian events, he really gets excited and acts really weird. Uh, and I, and I, I mean, I just the body language, my gaydar goes off with Obama. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, I mean, we, we know about his background now from Chicago. He's tried to cover it up. You know? But my issue is they can use it for blackmail. Oh, that's, that was the whole point, you know, whether you agree with it or not, you know, back when uh, there were, the, you know, uh, being a homosexual was considered to be a, a highly black male. Well, okay, we had J. Edgar Hoover at the FBI, but uh, the, 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 the word... That was the whole point. The mob was running him. It was all blackmail, right. They were running him. It was all that you could be blackmailed because <laughs> uh, there was such a social stigma attached to it that you wouldn't want the information to come out. It's different now, but that's what the original idea was back in the day when they investigated. Well, I'm told by Hollywood, and, and, and this is also coming out uh, in uh, the Vatican, that you've almost got to be involved in that to be part of it now. It's like, and we're learning about this mafia and hip hop, where they tell them, you know, you got to come to the party and do this if you're going to be in the club. Well, I mean, that, that, that's really weird. You know, all through the history, you read books on the history of Hollywood, and you find out not only actresses had to wind up on the director's casting couch, but a lot of male actors did as well. And some very big names or were, were associated with that. People would be I surprised. just don't I, I just don't get it. I, I guess it's the power, isn't it? It is power. I think Henry Kissinger, who I despise as as the uh, only unindicted war criminal. The great aphrodisiac is power. Exactly. That's what he said. And that in that respect, that's the one thing that he'll always be remembered for. Because that's absolutely true what he said. And reportedly Kissinger is quite the uh, horn dog. Well, he's up in years now, but yeah, remember he used to be considered quite the bachelor with uh, dating uh, starlets, uh, Jill St. John, and you know. Oz What's disgusting that. is it was in a couple of newspapers that the Prince of Darkness, um, Pearl, goes to parties and, and to women and says, "I control lots of stuff and kill lots of people." And he thinks that like shows off to women, uh, I, and even those our hungry women go, "Ooh, yeah!" Just uh, imagine they, that guy. Just say, "Go choke on your," you know. But imagine just going, "I am yeah. powerful. Yeah. I kill people." Yeah. Go oh, Pearl, you're so powerful. Yeah. Go choke, choke on a jumbo shrimp at the buffet. Table. I mean, the guy can hardly. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. unbelievable. I control drone forces. Aren't I sexy? <laughs> <laughs> Phone calls coming up. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News. And over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones radio show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. And remember, Obama said we shouldn't listen to these people that warn about tyranny around the corner. Well, it isn't around the corner. It's sitting on top of us. Well, we can't trust federal judges. The fed There's total illegal spying across the board. 
it's been public for at least 15 years. Wayne Madsen goes, here, media, look at this European Commission admitting the sharing the data. All these governments are lying, blaming it on the U.S. They're all involved. They're like, this man's crazy. You know, he pointed out admitted facts. And Snowden, Snowden's in trouble, in my view. And I want your brief take on this and then take calls. We're going to get a Trayvon Martin and the whole case and about to go to the jury. And we've got the Veritas Project head joining us with his book. To get, he'll give his take on that as well. But his real crime is they don't want the moral authority of someone in government because they've endowed that with godlike status to say, no, we're spying on the press and the people and the government's out of control. And Bradley Manning says we were killing innocent people like a kid burning bugs with a magnifying glass. They don't want the government politically vocal. Just like they're arresting CIA guys that go, yeah, we did illegally torture. Well, you're not supposed to get arrested for whistleblowing, exposing a crime. So it's unprecedented and only Obama could get away with this. So, uh, I mean, why do you, I mean, do you think that's Snowden's big crime? Uh, yeah, uh, look, Obama has brought more Espionage uh, Act violations. The 1917 Espionage Act, put in by Woodrow Wilson. He's brought more uh, charges under the Espionage Act than any other pre previous president combined. Snowden being the last, the latest one. Tom Drake. Yeah, it's uh, not es espionage uh, is to give missile secrets to the Chinese. Yeah. Oops, our government did that guy bipartisan. Being a very good intelligence agency asset president. That's what he was designed to do. That's what he was groomed to do. That's what he's doing. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, um, spying on the Associated Press, over 100 reporters and editors at the AP, James Rosen at Fox News. The list goes on and on, trying to get uh, J uh, Jim Risen from the... And now they're saying they may indict Rupert Murdoch. Uh, and look, I'm, yeah. obviously the spying scandal, not good over there in England, but compared to the Justice Department mm. and all the stuff it's doing, what, a magnitude of a thousand times? Right. So, you know, the deal, the, the situation is, is that... Uh, some people said what Obama has done is criminalized investigative journalism. And it's true. The, the, the president of the AP, Gary Pruitt, told the press club a couple weeks ago, all our sources have gone cold on us. They don't, they're fearful. And that's they why they killed to. Hastings, because he said, all of us have to unite. America's being taken down. They've declared war on us. We declare war on them. Release all the info. Have courage. They went, have courage? Boom. Right, right. Briefly on, on, on Hastings, uh, I had his buddy, Staff Sergeant Biggs, on yesterday. I mean, now it's come out. They they basically killed him. Uh, yeah, it doesn't it pass the smell test. I mean, uh, we had Richard Clark even suggest, a former counterterrorism guy, that, you know, you can manipulate a Mercedes. I, I After uh, Princess Diana died in the crash in Paris, I was in Paris right after that. And and it was quite clear. Well, the French police. The witnesses that somebody had sp sped that car up inside the tunnel, uh, causing it to, to crash at a high rate, rate of speed. So, yes, that technology has been around an awful long time. Well, no kidding. They got g robot Google cars driving around. Absolutely. So. Uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, they had robot cars, remote controlled by radio control, 80 years ago. Absolutely. So whether it was uh, that or a bomb, it, it, clearly it, it was, was a bomb. It was sabotage. They sabotaged. The witnesses the said it was driving and blew up on the road. Yeah. The engine shot the opposite direction. Right. Right. So it's a, it looks like if it happened in Beirut or Damascus, there'd be no question as to whether it was... It was a terrorist attack. Maybe that's the new thing. Maybe like special forces jumps out, puts a bomb on you. They go up ropes and helicopters. You blow up and they go, spontaneous combustion. Let's go to some phone calls here. Mike in Oregon, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Wayne and Alex, you guys, I salute you a lot. Well, lot thank you, brother. Your phone's real know. bad. Go ahead and throw your question out real quick. Oh, uh, so I live in Granny State Central, Portland, Oregon, and everyone's walked around like they're Jack Bauer and whatnot. And, I mean, I had an old lady pound down my door the other day because some kid was walking through the neighborhood and was like, I think he's suspicious. I wouldn't have asked the kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your right phone's now. so bad, I'm going to let you go. Uh, but, but but I got what you were saying. We were making jokes during a break about looking at each other and watching. The government says, watch everyone. Government, watch each other. Trust no one. Of course you're going to have Zimmerman going around getting in somebody's face. I mean, uh, you know, look, the Berlin police today are investigating who shined the light on the U.S. Embassy there that said United Stasi of America. And uh, they want to get the guy who, the light artist who designed that and who shined it on the end. You want to get a medal. Yeah, not not go after the people at the U.S. Embassy in Berlin who are listening in on German communications of, of private citizens. Uh, have you seen the video of the German cops? The guy does nothing and like 10 cops beat him till they almost kill him. 
Yeah, you know, nothing's changed much over there in the last 70 years. Oh, yeah, I, I, I've heard, like, German police will be, uh, like, if you even say one thing to them, they're going to beat your brains out. I mean, I've seen the Austrian police do the same thing, especially with immigrants. You do not want to get out of line and be Turkish or Tunisian in Vienna, Austria. You know, it's, you know, it, it, but we can talk about that. We have the same issue here with our cops. It's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, they're investigating United Stasi of America artist. You know, that's it. I want to find a company. I want to start doing that on government buildings around here. I mean, and, and they, they're like such a big deal. You know, oh, we may arrest you for that. What a bunch of scum. I mean, the sun shining on your building, you're going to arrest them for that? Yeah, only Commissioner Gordon can use the uh, the bat, you know, the bat light, apparently. Well, where is Batman? Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Chase in Texas. Welcome to the airwaves. Well, thank you, sir. It's been a while, and I'm glad to be hearing you on 1300 out of Beaumont, Texas, sir. It's sure good to hear y'all with the truth here. That's right. You're listening on KSET 1300. I never plug stations like I should. Everybody in Beaumont, I got family from Beaumont on my grandmother's side and my mom's side. Everybody in Beaumont needs to spread the word that we're on there. God bless that station. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. And in my younger misguided youth, you know, I was I was very overzealous at the top. I think at first, as far as calling in a little, a little over the top and, and, and pushing this. So my question for Mr. Madsen is, is, if, if saying these things and, and, and doing that, obviously you're going to be on the list. And kind of like what John Hancock said, I want my name at the top of the list, though I don't want to die. I love life. I'm a Christian. Um, where, where do you stand as far as if you call in one time on Washington Journal, on any of these shows, and, you, and, and they kind of, do, do they uh, rat hole you into an area where we'll <laughs> save this person for another day or he fits into this? I mean, what you do is you say, I'm an American, I'm a liberty lover, I'm a constitutionalist, and they want to call you independent, liberal, conservative. Just say, I'm liberal, because Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. Well, these terms mean nothing now. Just say whatever gets you on the air. I mean, don't lie, but just say, oh, I'm a liberal, because a real liberal would be against all this tyranny. Yes. Uh, or, or I'm a conservative. I want to conserve the old liberal values that made this country so great. It was liberal to own a gun. It was liberal to own your own property. It was liberal to be free. That, the liberal means more freedom, not less freedom. See, they've stolen all these terms. And uh, God bless you, uh, sir. Good to have you listening there in Beaumont, uh, Texas. What do you call yourself, Wayne? Um, I, I consider myself a, a pretty much a populist. Um, um, I, I look at FDR as a good president. I think he helped the people in this country when the people need it. Now we can argue about what he knew about Pearl Harbor and all that. But let's look. He never lived long enough to get the second New Deal. And that, there was a lot of good things in there. We wouldn't be having these discussions. You can argue good and bad and all that, but anything they take that's collectivist will end up making people dependent. But I get your point. At least he broke up the big banks and didn't let them. He broke up the big banks. Do the derivatives. Teddy Roosevelt, who was a Republican, his cousin, broke up the, the, uh, the, the monopolies. I mean, this is... These are the people we should be uh, uh, highlighting. Well, it's not good for business to let monopolies run things, or we'll turn. Mexico's got monopolies. Yeah. Do we want to live like that? Yeah. I mean, I look at Dwight Eisenhower as a great president. The things he was able to do, he kept us out of war. He got us. Now, why doesn't he get credit for the Civil Rights Act and all that? Because, you know, there were people that back then calling Eisenhower a pinko, you know? Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, and then. Um, you know, Jack Kennedy didn't live long enough to do the things he wanted to do. And then we got, we started, then we got our first uh, really corrupt, really corrupt presidents. Lyndon Johnson, followed by Nixon. Uh, by the time Jimmy Carter, Ford was a placeholder. He was a yes man. Absolutely. Let's jam in. Jimmy, poor Jimmy Carter tried and, you know, they set him up with the Iran hostage thing. Just Let's go to Alex in Illinois. You're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Go ahead with your question, sir. Uh, party on Wayne, party on Alex. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if Wayne could elaborate on NSA slash DARPA slash CIA brain scan MRIs, like a truth machine. Yeah, well, what these are is quack frauds, just like lie detectors. And they now have a passive brain scanners at some airports. People think that's crazy. Look it up. I think five airports have it in the U.S. last time I checked. Then they claim, oh, brain waves show you're agitated. And like, yeah, I'm late. Yeah, I got an ulcer. I mean, you know. Uh, it's like you're sweating. Well, yeah, it's hot in here. Look, any, any go back and look at any science fiction movie, and I guarantee you some part of the U.S. intelligence community is working on that technology. And it's in the New York Times today that they've created the, you know, the prototype Terminator robot. 
called Atlas. It's a scary looking thing. It's huge. Yeah, will you guys print uh, the Terminator killer robot for me? Well, I was told by Marines 14 years ago that they about that robot. They've, they've got a whole bunch of them. Right. And then, Listen, my grandfather sold a prototype uh, riot control. Uh, it was remote control, had these big arms with cattle prods on it, and they only got their money back. They sold that to the Pentagon. Yeah, it's like the, the movie Minority Report where they let these little nano insects, robotic insects, go into people's homes and spy on them. They already have that. They have that. They have that. They had it when that came out. They crawl, they fly, they go underwater. They can do all that stuff. Yeah, and Atlas is nothing. The real weapons platforms are big armored tanks, the mini tanks that have like 10 guns on them, nerve gas, you name it. And they just and that, those things are autonomous. Yeah, you look at this and you think of Charlton Heston at the final scene of Planet of the Apes. Damn them all to hell, they finally did it. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. All a bunch of control freaks. Hey, listen, Wayne, we're going to have you on tonight for the Obama deception too. God bless you. We've got James O'Keefe coming up. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.